This is KFSM TV, Channel 5, Fort Smith. We are back here in the Five News Vault. Hours and hours of five country history located right here on these tapes. We have been covering news where you live for 70 years, and today we're going back to 1985. Thanks for joining us. I'm Darren Bob. And I'm Alexandra Burnley. 1985 takes us right into the AIDS epidemic, the widespread growth of Walmart, and also Arkansas becoming the first state in America to require their teachers to take competency tests. For the next 30 minutes, we are rolling these tapes back to back. Enjoy. And bottom line, it's got to be a matter of is the price right, the quality right for the, our customers. We cannot buy and put anything and offer anything out there that's not as good or better than what's available offshore. Walmart founder and chairman Sam Walton says the idea that American-made products have to cost more is a fallacy. Walmart stores already feature prominent displays of low-cost items made in America, and Walton says this is just the beginning. I picked up an oscillating fan in Fayetteville yesterday. It was made in Taiwan. It was imported by Walmart. We are going to buy about seven and a half million dollars of those things. Next year, we're gonna buy all $10 million in the United States made in Fort Worth and made in Nashville, Tennessee. The secret, according to Walton, is simple. Give American industries the same breaks as foreign manufacturers. Arrange more lead time, place bigger advance orders, make faster payments. Walton says it means harder work for his buyers. Visiting small towns in America isn't as glamorous as going to Japan or Taiwan. And so far, he says, other retailers are skeptical. We've heard the word unrealistic. Walmart is unrealistic. But we don't believe that. Walton says he's trying to help the U.S. trade deficit and American workers, but he's not out to eliminate all imports either. We're not going to cut out our import program, but we're going to we're going to look at everything we do before we place an order anywhere to see if it can first be done in this country as well or better with our with with our with people who are our customers who are buying from us every day. I think I've talked enough. Isn't that enough? Walmart's growth outside Arkansas has been phenomenal, but the company's headquarters in Bentonville have been growing too. This summer, the company began constructing an auditorium and cafeteria complex for its associates. Completion is set for late spring, and earlier this month, Walmart completed the expansion of its data processing operation, which now stands as the largest of its kind in the state. Add a newly purchased office facility, and you're looking at room for 100 new jobs in Bentonville in the next few years. It translates into jobs for not only Bentonville, but, but the whole northwest Arkansas area and southwest Missouri. At the same time, the company has announced plans to move their fleet of five aircraft from Bentonville to the Rogers Airport. Jim Von Grimm says the company's growth means they'll need the services of the bigger airport. Walmart's looking to the future. We uh, are in 20 states at the current time. We've announced that we're going into Colorado next year, into Minnesota. Uh, and. We're going to need faster planes, uh, possibly even larger planes, but most definitely uh, faster planes in order to be able to get our people to those areas. Von Gramp says the company is planning to add more than 100 new stores each year for at least the next five years. Projected growth for Walmart at home and around the country seems virtually unlimited. In Bentonville, this is Steve Ories reporting for the news people. Downtown America began its decline shortly after shopping centers appeared in the suburbs of the 50s. A decade later, the plight of downtowns deepened with the advent of the shopping mall. In an effort to rejuvenate downtown business districts, the Main Street USA project has chosen five Arkansas cities for inclusion in a three-year program to bring new life to urban America. Unlike the urban renewal program of the 60s, the Main Street project is based in large part on historic preservation. Through the use of effective downtown management practices, preserving the past is not all that expensive. We really depend on local initiative to make things happen. The nature of the Main Street program is incremental over time. It doesn't require a tremendous input of capital to get the program started and to get it underway. We're really talking about a management program for downtown that, uh, on the scale of things, is really a very small dollar figure to be put in. 
Today, a team of consultants, including specialists from the fields of architecture, marketing, and promotions, along with representatives from the state and national Main Street programs, began touring Rogers. The group is seeking the input of residents, merchants, and community leaders as to which direction they think downtown Rogers should be moving. Their findings will form the basis for recommendations the group will later make to the city. In Rogers, Mike Thomas for the News People. This is definitely not the first time liquor has been made in the Ozarks, but this is the first time it has been done legally. Arkansas Distillers is the first and only licensed distiller in the state. What started out as a project for producing alcohol fuel is now being used to produce a more traditional and drinkable form of alcohol. Owner Tom Ward has all the hopes of success and expansion that any new business owner has. But there is something just a little different about this distillery. You see the vodka produced here is made especially for those of us who need to count calories. You've heard of light beer and light wine. Well, how about light vodka? If the light business is going to be good in the future, light vodka should have a place. Uh, being the first in Arkansas that we're introducing it, uh, at least we're, we'll be the guinea pig. We're either going to get great acceptance or people will not accept it. The distillery produces regular 80 proof 160 calorie vodka also, but it is the 71 calorie 50 proof good old Arkansas Silver Harvest Specialite vodka that Ward seems to be putting his money on. Some of his goals for the future are to manufacture and bottle more brands of alcohol with Arkansas names, such as Boston Mountain Gin and Black Diamond Vodka. Who knows, maybe he'll make some Razorback Rye too. In Fayetteville, I'm Bill Roselle for the News People. The occasion was the official unveiling of Bill Underwood's exclusive diamond collection. The collection features 12 major handcrafted pieces of exquisite high-quality diamonds. To honor the occasion, one of the world's top diamond cutters was on hand, demonstrating his gem of a job. Representing the prestigious firm of Lazar Kaplan International, William Meyer was putting the finishing touches on a 58-faceted half-carat stone valued at just over $3,000. It's the first diamond to be cut and polished in the state, and on July 1st, it's going to be given away. That's right, given away to the very lucky winner of a drawing. It rates very highly. It's a very, very, very good color stone. It's very high in an imperfection rating, and it is beautifully, beautifully made. It's made of the ideal proportion stone. After the last sparkle was added, Meyer handed the historic gem to the boss for a closer look. Mr. Underwood, who was recently elected president-elect of the American Gemological Society, gave his personal endorsement of a job well done. In Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People. The new phone book's here! The new phone book's here! Well, I wish I could get that excited about the book. Nothing! Are you kidding? Page 73, Johnson, Maven, R. I'm somebody now! It's not just the phone book, it's some 69,000 phone books that will be distributed throughout the Fayetteville-Springdale area between now and the end of the month. This is the telephone book delivery office. I was checking to see how many telephone books y'all needed this year. While the book may not make you somebody, its distribution will provide temporary jobs for about 85 people. Applicants began arriving at the distribution center in Springdale today, but were disappointed to learn that the distribution itself will be delayed a few days thanks to the rain. After all, who wants a soggy phone book? The book itself has changed over the years, and the 1985 edition is no exception. There's a consumer tip guide section in the book. There's a survival guide for all kinds of catastrophes. So. Maximum utility is gained uh, with the use of the directories, what we're trying to do. Some 94,000 books have been printed for Northwest Arkansas consumers, and according to Mr. Farrell, this area's book is unique in that it contains the listings for residences and businesses for not just one or two, but eight area cities. In Springdale, Mike Thomas for the News People. 
The AIDS epidemic had a grip on the entire country. The CDC reports that in 1985, more people were diagnosed with AIDS than all the other previous years combined. The crisis had a huge impact on the gay community. It also brought about a movement to liberate and empower them with pride parades and so much more. Researchers across the country are fighting what has thus far been a losing battle in an effort to find a vaccine for AIDS. According to the state health department, nine Arkansans have died from the disease since 1983. Five of those deaths have occurred just this year, and two of those five have been in northwest Arkansas. The news people have learned that a Washington County resident who was treated for AIDS here at Washington Regional eventually died from the disease this past February. The state's chief epidemiologist, Dr. Thomas McChesney, said in a telephone interview today that he fears the disease has entered a new phase of geometric acceleration. McChesney says the experts are expecting to see as many as 40,000 new cases in the next two years. McChesney estimated that as many as a million people among the general population could already be carrying the antibodies of the AIDS virus. Despite the growing numbers, McChesney stressed that there is still no proof that AIDS can be transmitted through casual contact. He added that a positive test for the AIDS antibody does not necessarily mean that a person will ever contract the disease. It simply means that they have at one time or another been exposed to the AIDS virus. The the reason that the research has yet to produce a test for the virus itself or a vaccine is that the virus appears to have the ability to mutate or change its form quite readily. Dr. McChesney says the entire picture will be much clearer in the next three to four months once researchers at the Centers for Disease Control have had a chance to analyze the results from the ongoing antibody tests. In Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People. About 30 members of the gay community turned out at the Fayetteville Public Library to hear a panel discussion of AIDS. The event is but one in a series planned for this week in celebration of National Lesbian and Gay Pride Week. The increased visibility of the gay community here has prompted a backlash of anti-gay sentiment, most notably the USA, or United Student Association, which sought to deny the gays funding on the university campus. Reporters learned tonight that another anti-gay group, CURE, or Citizens United for a Right and Moral Environment, plans to protest the gay march on Saturday. Glad spokeswoman Sue Henry says the gays here have entered a new era of activism. I believe so. We were starting to organize anyway, and about the same time we started organizing for our own personal benefits, and just to be together and to get to know each other better, also an anti-gay group started up on campus. And that just brought us even closer together, and I think we've worked incredibly hard since then. It's been wonderful. Pride Week organizers have no plans to change their plans for this week's celebration. Well, the week sort of provides a, a focus for really what a, an important part of what I want to do with my life, which is to say to people who I, I don't know, here I am, I, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of about me, and I don't want to be afraid of you, and uh, here I am. The week will be climaxed by a march beginning at the Federal Building on Saturday. In Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People. I think most of you already have about some... The Gay Pride Rally at Fayetteville's Wilson Park passed without incident Saturday, but it may have been a near miss. An hour or two before the rally began, nine-year-old Ammon Jordan and a friend found what appeared to be a makeshift bomb in a tree near the rally site. Just a box with wires coming from a clock to a battery and then from a battery to firecrackers. There's wire connected to the end of the fuse. The boys dismantled the box and turned it over to city police. Officer John Schuster says the firecrackers might have gone off if someone lit the fuse with a match, but otherwise the device was harmless. Uh, there was no detonator uh, that would detonate it. It was just taped together to look as a device that might explode. Police were awarded Ammon and his friend by giving them most of the fireworks. Ammon's father, Bob Jordan, says he believes the bomb was a prank, but he doesn't think it's funny. I was very upset that that kind of device with uh, alarm clocks and batteries was set up in, in the park and that, you know, where anyone could get hurt. The kids didn't know what it was when they knocked it down from a tree. Anti-gay sentiment took another form Sunday as a group called Save America launched what members say will be an extensive campaign focusing on the threat of AIDS. 
A local newspaper ad warned of the dangers of AIDS and called for laws to prevent homosexuals from working in restaurants, hospitals, or any jobs where they come in contact with children. In Fayetteville, this is Steve Ories reporting for the News People. Two Fayetteville boys found the homemade contraption in a tree at Wilson Park on June 22nd. Several hours before a gay pride rally and an anti-gay counter demonstration were scheduled to begin. The device contained several hundred firecrackers and a timing apparatus, but was considered harmless by police. Still, the incident angered people on all sides of the gay rights issue. That controversy apparently convinced the culprits to turn themselves in. In Fayetteville Municipal Court this morning, Kevin Parker and Kevin Phillips pleaded guilty to discharging fireworks without a permit. The two men, both paramedics with the Central Emergency Medical Service, received a 30-day suspended sentence and were fined $127 each. City Prosecutor Terry Jones said today that he filed the strongest charge he could under the law. The statutes for disorderly conduct, for example, disorderly conduct is a Class C misdemeanor carrying a $100 fine and 30 days in jail. The uh, fireworks carried a more severe penalty. Jones says there was no evidence the men meant to hurt anyone or that the incident was anything more than what the two called it, a stupid prank. But he says their statements today have also implicated a former Central EMS employee, a man who now works for the Springdale Police. And Jones says he expects to file additional charges against that man on Wednesday. In Fayetteville, this is Steve Ories reporting for the News People. Much like this plane, Jim Walton's twin-engine Aerostar had just left the Bentonville Municipal Airport en route to Little Rock on business. But when Walton's plane developed engine trouble shortly after takeoff, he doubled back in an attempt to return to Bentonville. He was forced to crash land in a pasture on a direct line with the Bentonville Airport. The landing gear buckled upon impact and the plane skidded for about 150 to 200 yards before coming to rest here. Rancher Gerald Keenan was the first on the scene, and he describes what he saw. When I got there, the pilot was about 10 feet out of the plane, and he was crawling away from the plane. And he was waving one hand. He thought maybe we wouldn't see him or something, I don't know. But anyway, he was waving his hand, and so then I just went back and called the authorities, and, and uh, maybe he thought it was going to blow up, I don't know. But he was getting away from it pretty fast. Walton suffered no serious injury in the crash. However, rancher Keenan lost two cows when they were hit by the skidding aircraft. In Rogers, I'm Bill Roselle for the News People. The school's new supercomputer can do some pretty super things. The $450,000 tool is a gift from the Harris Corporation, representing the company's largest grant to date. It can process nearly 2 million instructions per second, a capacity that will increase 50-fold once it's been tied to the school's main computer. Experts say modern-day digital devices wouldn't be without computers like this one. It is impossible to design the integrated circuits that are used in these devices without the aid of a computer. And of course, if you have the computers, you've got to have people to design the computers, to operate the computers. Employers will pay top dollar to engineering and computer graduates. A Michigan State study shows majors in technical fields will earn a starting salary of around $26,000 upon entering the workforce. Journalists, by the way, came in fourth from the bottom on that same survey. In Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People. Stop pacing the floor, put the kids in the car, get to the store, it's back. Coca-Cola, the original Coca-Cola, has arrived in northwest Arkansas, and Coca-Cola connoisseurs couldn't be more content. Why? Because I love it. It's better than the old Coke. The new Coke. <laughs> It is a little confusing, but one thing retailers are sure of is that it's selling. It's great. We had, uh, I think, 200 cases in brought in Monday, and uh, it moved out of here before we could even set it all up. The new old Coke looks a little different than it used to, and to some, it tastes a little different, too. Company officials say the public has simply gotten used to the newer, sweeter Coke, and that freshly canned Coke does taste a little sweeter than that which has sat in a warehouse for several weeks. Karen White, Coke's quality controller in Little Rock, says it's the original formula all right, but she admits the company has received several inquiries about the original taste. In Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People. 
1985, teachers in Arkansas were faced with competency testing, making Arkansas the first state in the nation to test its teachers on their competence and basic skills. There were many protests across the state because of the testing, and those who didn't pass after four tries could never teach in Arkansas again, causing further outrage against the state and former Governor Bill Clinton. This is Bill Roselle in Fayetteville. Teachers and administrators showed up for today's test casually dressed and apparently free of any apprehension about the contents of the test. The teachers said they thought it was a waste of their time and the taxpayers' money, but if it has to be done, they may as well get it over with. Well, I thought it was interesting because here I've been teaching for 30 years and I go into a four-hour test to find out whether I'm competent or not. I think for most of us, we feel that we're tested most every day that we go in the classroom and we are um, prepared for, for what we're doing and that's our biggest test. Reportedly about 10 percent of teachers statewide are refusing to take the test. Yesterday, Peggy Neighbors, president of the Arkansas Education Association, said that possibly as much as 40 percent of Arkansas teachers would boycott the test. This morning at AEA headquarters in Springdale, a few of the boycotting teachers were on hand to show how they feel about the test. Dan Marzoni of Fayetteville said he will not take the test because he believes the test is unconstitutional and politically motivated. But you do not improve education education by attacking the people who have to improve education, namely the teachers. The teachers here at Boycott Headquarters say that if the time has come for teacher testing, then it is also time for competency testing for governors. In Fayetteville, I'm Bill Roselle for the News People. Saturday the song probably won't mean as much as it does now. And it probably won't sell a million or go gold or anything like that. Right. But we're just having fun playing. <laughs> right. We invite your comment this morning. The song in question is less than a week old and it's already set many a teacher's toes a-tapping. It debuted this morning on Fayetteville's KFAY and here's a brief excerpt. Following the song, program director J.L. Fisk opened the phone lines to solicit listeners' reactions to the song and the controversy that it addresses. All right, I am a teacher, and I do not believe in Governor Bill's test, but I am going to take it because I'm a single parent trying to make house payments to raise a child, and I can't afford to lose my job. But as soon as I can get out of Arkansas, I'm leaving. I'm going to go to a state that respects its teachers. I feel that if the teachers are able to teach, they should take the song as it is, just in fun. And uh, I feel that we do need to teach your testing. The calls were evenly divided between those favoring the song and those favoring the test. One listener commented that Ms. Craig should abandon the classroom in favor of the recording studio. While it may not exactly be top ten material, the tune is certainly a chart buster in the minds of many teachers. In Fayetteville, Mike Thomas for the News People. We hope you enjoyed this blast from the past. Now we want to know, where were you in 1985? Do you remember these stories? If you do, text us 479-785-5000. From inside the vault, I'm Darren Bob. And I'm Alexandra Burnley. Thanks for watching.